Hi everyone, hope you're well, hope you're having a good start to the week. So it's at that time again of the month where we run through the Zoopla report. We go through what's been happening over the last year or year on year, I should say, up till the end of January and uh, the way things are moving forward and where we expect things to go. So without further ado, let's dive in. So as you can see from the report here, the first thing is, is that the current UK house price growth is still maintaining a rapid growth. We've got 7.8%. Now, this report was to the end of January 2022. It's only just been published, but to the end of January 2022. You can see here that we're still increasing 7.8% year on year, which is fantastic. The demand for homes over a running five-year average is up 70%. Now, that's huge. Now, there's a number of reasons for that, um, which we'll come to uh, more towards the latter part of this, but we're still 70% increase in terms of the demand for property. And actually, a good thing is that the flow of supply has now increased um, slightly. So we're 5% up over a five-year average. We're a bit more than that up over year on year, but that's because we were starting at a bit of a low in 2021, but we are um, starting to see the flow of new supply coming through. So let's delve in a little bit into the um, into the summary. As you can see here, the average house prices rose by 7.8% in the year to January. The average house price is now £244,000 uh, or just over. Now that is huge. That is really tough for a first time buyer. That's really tough for a, um, a young couple. So what we're tending to find is um, young people are living in the uh, rented accommodation uh, a lot of the time within city centres for far longer than they did before, or they're living at home with mum and dad. But what we've seen is a lot of people want to get out of that um, uh, mum and dad scenario and get into the more social side where they've got cafes, bars, restaurants, and that's happening in city centres, especially for those who have got jobs in the city centres. It means they can cut down on the travel time. I know with my guys here um, who work at the company, a lot of them, they might come in as um, young professionals and they might be living with mum and dad initially and they soon get the buzz for the city. They soon think, well, actually, I don't want to travel on the train for an hour. I don't want to um, sit in the car for an hour. So they're renting here and the prices here to rent are expensive. They're £30,000 a year to rent. Um, but the reality is, is they're living in an 800 to a million pound apartment and they're paying sort of 30,000 um, pounds. You can see here that Wales has registered its highest price growth um, for its 11th month running at 11.7%. London price is slowest, 3.1%. And again, that just simply shows that London is probably um, a little bit on the toppy side. So the majority of people are renting here, as we know, that's what London is. Um, we're starting to see um, uh, things ease slightly. So they had a bit of a surge in the new year um, as buyer demand um, uh, picked up. What we tend to find is over Christmas where people find, and we said this before, they're living in properties that maybe are a bit too small. That's the gut feeling when they have family over. They feel that they're living in a property that's too small. Or if they go to other family or friends' houses, they suddenly get envy. So they start to sort of look on Rightmove and Zoopla and Boxing Day is actually the biggest day for Zoopla and the biggest day for Rightmove. So we start to see a bit more higher demand. And of course, that started to ease and that will ease um, heading into sort of uh, February uh, and March. But we do expect that to pick back up in April. The moment the um, half decent weather starts to hit, as we've seen the last couple of weekends here, then what we can start to see is people getting out and about, happy to do viewings, and also people selling their property because they're happy to have people in their properties and people in their houses. Um, so good news about the supply as well. Now, 2021 was horrendous for stock levels, mainly because 2020 um, was a shutdown for the construction market, especially in the first half of the year. So 2021 levels were well down. So, But we are starting to see the new supply running ahead of 2021 levels, but I'm not going to get too far ahead of ourselves there because 2021 was so low that I, you know, there's, there was no place for it to go apart from up. So the reality is 2021 was a poor um, supply um, for property. So 2022 has to be better um, in every way, shape or form. Um, and again, there's been a particular rise for family homes listed for sale. And again, that goes back to what we said previously, where 2020, first half of the year shut down. So you can imagine all those big sites where they've got two, three, 400 properties um, in terms of big estate or houses, they just shut down. But we're now starting to see those um, come back on. And we do expect um, an easing in the house price growth um, during 2022, which is you know, a, a given. We certainly don't expect it to be rising another 10% this year. But again, the fact that it's going to ease, we still expect a 4 to 5% increase, which will still be a phenomenal uh, rate of return. So as we start to sort of head down, again, this heads more into um, an annual percentage change in terms of the um, UK house uh, price growth here. And again, we've got the quarterly change. You can see, obviously, here, um, like we typically always expect, 
Um, things pick up during the spring. You saw April 2021 here, picked up during the spring, peaks in terms of the summer months. And then, of course, it then tails off towards the winter. That, that's a normal curvature of the, um, of the bar chart there. And we expect the same this year as well. So 2022, I expect the same thing. You sometimes have anomalies there where you might have um, a stamp duty holiday or, for example, when they bought in the buy to let um, extra stamp duty back in, I think it was 2016 off the top of my head. But the reality is, is typically you see this kind of curve and that's what we expect again this year. Um, and the price growth gained momentum during um, the uh, uh, year of 2021. And we do expect it to be pretty um, pretty similar in terms of, um, uh, we still expect it to grow. We just don't expect it to grow as much. It can't keep going up 10, 15% every year. Um, so I say personally, four to 5% on average, some cities will do a lot better than that. Um, as we then start to head down, this is the key. The new supply of homes is gathering momentum. Now that's key. Um, it's great for companies like us because obviously um, we thrive on having projects to sell. So the more there is to sell, the better it is for us. That's how we make money as a company. But the reality is it's also great for um, people who are looking to get onto that ladder or potentially buy their second or third home or second or third investment. The reality is, is they want things to buy. There's been a big imbalance between um, buyer demand and supply. Um, and that is really what's driven the market up. And it's uh, like it's got here, it's not going to unwind immediately. It's not going to suddenly be the next two months. Um, it flips the other way. It won't. I still expect there to be an imbalance between demand and supply this year, actually, right the way through. And maybe sort of easing towards the um, spring summer of 2023, when we'll start to see um, a bit more supply um, than demand. But I still expect demand to outdo supply this year um, quite comfortably. But we are starting to see, as you can see here, the levels of supply start to increase. Another reason why supply is actually being restricted is not just because of the construction shutdown um, during lockdowns in 2020. It's actually simply due to the fact that things have got more expensive. So if you've got a site that made 20 percent, that's typically what a developer will go off. They want to make 20 percent to make it worth their while. They're typically now making maybe 10 to 12 percent. Suddenly they start to think, well, 10 percent, you know, if you've got a hundred million pound scheme, um, and you've got a 10%, it might seem great that you're making 10 million pounds, but you can easily see how things can swing. If prices went up by another 10%, well, suddenly it's wiped out all of your profit. So what they have to do is they have to put in um, uh, any contingency factors in there just to basically make sure um, that they're not going to sort of come out at a loss. So we're noticing at the moment until prices um, of materials, whether that be plaster, cement, timber, they start to ease up a bit we're noticing that um, a lot of developments are slowing down and we expect that to continue right the way through to the end of this year. Um, again, as we sort of um, start to head down, you can see certain areas. For example, it says here that the UK was in lockdown in early 2021, but in several regions, Scotland, East Midlands, North East and Yorkshire and the Humber, the new listings exceeded levels in um, 2017 to 2020 over the same period. So we do expect that demand to say pick up, but I still, ex um, uh, the supply to pick up, sorry, but I, I still expect the demand to outweigh supply. As we then um, head down, guys, you can see um, the outlook. This is how long it's taking now to sell a three bed house. Now, um, uh, excluding London, this is, but that's rapid. 23 days from the day you put your property on the market, on average a three bed house, to the day it's sold, is taking 23 days. Now that is a rapid um, time frame. We know here we launched a project just before um, uh, Christmas and the start of December. We had 115 units and by the end of Jan that was fully sold out. Um, so 115 units over a six to eight week period. Um, things are going unbelievably quick. Um, and that's people looking for residential, that's people looking for investments as well. So this is the outlook here uh, according to Zoopla. Supply starting to turn. The speed that the way the market is uh, moving means that in January, half the properties that sold progressed from listing to sale agreed um, within three weeks. Um, and in comparison last year, around a third of the properties um, progressed this, uh, this quickly through. So um, we're, we're noticing that there's a, a lot quicker in terms of the sale speed and the sale time. And they've got 1.5 million homes sold last year and they're expecting 1.2 million homes um, for sale this year, as I say, down from 1.5 million. Personally, I think that we're still going to hit that 1.5 million. I know last year was unbelievably good in terms of the property market. I still think that the, the, the demand's there. I still think we'll reach that 1.5 million, especially as we start to head towards the summer months. People get more confident to list their properties and people are getting more confident, especially as COVID diminishes, people get more confident to actually get out there and actually view these properties. But what does that mean for you as an investor? Well, as an investor, 
you are still looking at the um, the top 10 being pretty similar. Manchester's been just edged out of the top two by Nottingham, but you're only talking about 0.3%. Liverpool's still way in the front, um, rising 10.3% uh, year on year. And, you know, the reality is, is whilst we have people um, not being able to afford properties, especially first-time buyers, and they carry on renting in the city centres, it's going to drive up the prices because if the rents are high, then investors are willing to pay a little bit more for that property because they're getting great investment yields. And that's the reality of it, is that we are slowly becoming uh, a nation of renters like the European countries, whether you go to Germany, whether you go to Spain, they are literally a nation of renters rather than a nation of buyers. Whereas you wind back a decade here and the majority of people wanted to get on the ladder early, people are waiting now till late 20s, early 30s, just simply due to the cost of the properties. So again, we're still looking at the same um, tried and tested methods in the north. That's where you want to be. And if you combine this kind of growth with 5% uh, on a traditional let income or 10% on a um, short term let income, we know that we can get between sort of um, 15 to 20% um, uh, um, a mixture of income and growth. So it's still a phenomenal place to um, invest in is, is the property market. We think it's going to continue. We are going to do a webinar on how the Ukraine situation is going to affect things. Um, again, we don't have a perfect crystal ball, but we can make um, certain guesstimations on how it's going to affect things. We think that obviously inflation is going to um, uh, keep rising slightly, especially because of the energy side of things. We think that might mean that the Bank of England is going to sort of um, trickle some rate rises, but we certainly don't feel that there's going to be any dramatic um, uh, decrease in the property market anytime soon. We're still looking at a good three to five years, in our opinion, right the way through. So. Um, if you've got money, if you're looking to invest, we still think now's a great time to invest in the property market. So look, have a great rest of the week. Have a great day. And um, I look forward to speaking to you soon. And don't forget, guys, if you want all of our latest videos or our updates, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. And there's plenty of uh, information and plenty of education coming out on our channels. Take care.